coronary perforation is one of the most challenging and dreadful complications of PCI, which associated with failed procedure, incidents of death, MI, urgent surgery and blood transfusion. Coronary perforation is defined as extravasation through a frank rupture at the level of an epicardial artery. Perforation is a complication arising from a procedure. Blood leakage could be into the myocardial, pericardial, coronary sinus or anatomic cavity or chamber. This is a relatively rare complication. With conventional balloon angioplasty or coronary stenting, the incidence is estimated to be 0.1-0.2%. Coronary perforation occurs more frequently with debulking techniques. Up to 3% have been reported with the use of atherectomy, rotoblation or laser angioplasty. Perforations are also more likely to occur when IVUS is used. The main cause is an incorrect interpretation of the information provided by IVUS and the usage of compliant, oversized balloons to maximize the stent lumen area. In what subset of patients is coronary perforation more common? Patient in whom the clinical situation is associated with calcified and fragile coronary arteries seem predisposed to this complication. This includes advanced age, family gender, chronic renal failure, and dialysis. Perforation is more common during PCI in patients with myocardial infarction. Target lesion characteristics are very important in predicting factors for coronary perforation. Chronic total occlusions, which account for about 10% of lesions subjected to coronary angioplasty, constitute a major cause for wire related perforation. PCI in complex lesions, especially calcified, resistant, and eccentric significantly increase risk for coronary perforation. Coronary perforation occurs more frequently in sites of tortuous vessel and angulated segments. As a rule, coronary perforation complicates challenging cases. A need for multiple wire exchange, use of guide wire dedicated for special lesions type as hydrophilic wires with a low coefficient of friction and easy of distal migration, or steep guide wires with the augmented penetration power significantly increase risk for perforation. The bulking technique is associated with perforation for several reasons. The first is excessive balloon ablation of ateroma together with the vessel wall. Second, use of special rotowire which does not provide sufficient support. Aggressive use of balloon angioplasty for lesion preparation, post dilatation, high pressure dilation, over dilatation, underestimation of lesion size and use of oversizing devices as well as balloon rupture are important contributing factors for coronary perforations. Use of IVUS, aspiration catheter, guideliner, microcatheter, and other devices requiring multiple manipulation in the coronary artery respectively increase the risk of vessel trauma. This slide presents the earliest classification of coronary perforation published in 1994, which described four types of coronary perforation. First, extraluminal crater of perforation limited by media or adventice of the vessel. Second, blush without extravasation. Third, 
extravasation through flank perforation, force perforation into the anatomical cavity, chamber, or coronary sinus. In this angio, you can see an example of extraluminal crater defined as perforation limited by adventitia of the vessel. This angio is of a patient after implanted stent to a proximal LED segment. This is another example of right coronary artery dissection with development of extraluminal crater in STEMI patient after vessel pre-dilatation during primary PCI. Rupture of internal layers of right coronary artery can expand intravascularly dissection or extravascularly perforation limited by media or adventitia of artery. Let's compare classification of two coronary pathologies, dissection and perforation. According to the classification of coronary dissection, Type C perforation called extraluminal cap is defined as persistent of contrast outside the coronary lumen after contrast has already cleared from the lumen. According to the Ellis classification of coronary perforation, type 1 perforation is limited to the vessel wall and form an extraluminal crater without extravasation. Actually, type 1 perforation, name extraluminal crater, and type C dissection, type called extraluminal cap, are both the same vessel pathology. In my opinion, it is more correct to define extraluminal cap or crater as a type of coronary dissection because this is an intracoronary pathology that does not penetrate the artery. The new classification I propose divided coronary perforations by types, scenario and mechanism, and site. The first type is containing coronary perforation, defined as limited extravasation or stable intramural hematoma. The main features are absence of extension of extravasation band angio and absence of clinical features of extension as pain, ECG changes, hemodynamic compromise, or rhythm disturbance. As a rule, this type is a self-limiting condition due to its sealing of the perforation site. This type limits the continuation of the procedure and in the majority of cases requires a wait and see strategy to exclude extension of extravasation. In this angle, we can see contrast extravasation in a patient following an attempt to cross a chronic circumflex occlusion by stiff guide wire. The patient remained completely asymptomatic. There was no angiographic evidence of hematoma extension. In this stage, procedure was held back. Elective PCI to CTO was done successfully two months later. Perforation of coronary artery with pericardial or cavity spilling is a life threatening situation requiring speedy sealing of the bleeding vessel. Pericardial leakage is more common, could progress to tamponade, and frequently requires pericardial synthesis. Cavity spilling perforation commonly is directed to the left or right ventricle. Iatrogenic coronary artery fistula between the artery 
and the coronary sinus could cause a still phenomenon. This group is characterized by fast-paced hemodynamic changes which need urgent diagnostic and care. This is an example of a distal pericardium spilling perforation with medium volume leakage to pericardial space. This is an example of large volume cavity spilling directly to the left ventricle in patient with a mid LED perforation. Swallowing coronary perforation is a process of intramural bleeding expanding towards epicardium with possible development of pericardial spilling and tamponade, or endocardium with possible development of cavity spilling or coronary vein spilling. This group is characterized by progressive deterioration of clinical situation, fast-paced cardiogenic shock as a result of acute pump failure and contribution of the pathophysiology of tamponade and slow recovery after filling of the leaking vessel. This is an urgent, life-treatening situation requiring speedy sealing of the leaking vessel associated with worse prognosis and often requiring surgical treatment. This PCI was complicated by coronary perforation presented by a quickly sprawling intramural hematome towards the epicardial with development of pericardial leak. This case demonstrates a coronary perforation with development of sprawling massive intramural bleeding, leading finally to pericardial leakage. Like perforation, coronary artery dissection is a result of vessel rupture. The difference is in the direction of damage extension, perforation is extravascular spreading, dissection is intravascular. This angio demonstrates a contribution of extravascular intramural hematome and intravascular type D dissection of right coronary artery. Intravascular spreading of the section leads to formation of luminal flap, false lumen, and even a broad closure of the artery. Extravascular spreading of rupture results in extravascular blood leakage. A combination of dissection and perforation raises special management challenges. Treatment of a dissection requires augmented anticoagulation and antiplatelets regime that are absolutely contraindicated for perforation. Recovery of coronary flow in case of dissection could lead to worsening of extravasation. Use of reversal anticoagulation and antiplatelets agent together with a long-term balloon tamponade of perforation site could be cause of thrombosis or a dissected artery followed by vessel closure. The section and related slow flow in the artery on the one hand could diminish extravasation and on the other hand challenge sealing options for perforation. This coronary angio is of a patient with calcified LED diagonal 
bifurcation is LED and diagonal predial levitation was performed. You can see the swelling perforation of the diagonal and dissection spreading to proximal segment of LED towards the mid portion of the artery. Low pressure balloon inflation in this side of perforation was performed. This is an angio demonstrating the situation after deflation of the balloon, sealing of the perforation and closure of the diagonal artery was associated with continuation of dissection of the LED, antegrade and retrograde to left main coronary artery level with thrombosis and complete closure of the LED widening towards the circumflex artery.